This is A-level CIE biology with schedule. So we're going to be looking at gas exchange P2 series one. Um, let's run off, okay? I want to wish you the best on your exams. I know you've done paper four, paper three, and you're preparing for paper two next week, okay? So let's go on. So I think 1.1 shows, um, okay? A section through the human chest, the growth structure of the human gas exchange system is shown. Okay, that's Fig 1.1. Can see that? All right. So if you look at this Fig, uh, okay. So let's check it out. All right. What is B? Okay. What is pause the video and and then try to remember them. But let's go straight to what they want us to do. Okay. All right. So um, don't forget that B is what. Okay track here c is you can see c is bronchus j is also bronchus can you see that all right so let me let me let, let me not mention all of them for you there must be the one you're going to mention all right let's go to the next there is a descriptions of some parts of the gas exchange system are shown in table 1.1 complete table 1.1 to state the name of the part described write a letter from fig one point write a letter from Fig 1.1 to identify each part. Okay, let's look at it. Okay, the, the description says supported by incomplete C shaped rings of cartilage. So, which of the parts, okay, has C shaped ring? All right, pause the video and attempt this question. Just pause the video. So, the one that has C ring shaped is trachea. So, this is, we should be trachea. Okay, so which letter represents trachea? We're going to find out. Okay, but let's run through line by ciliated epithelium and supported by blocks of cartilage, guys. Which one is that? What does that speak to? Which one is line by ciliated epithelium? Okay, look, both of them have cartilage, this has cartilage, and there are only two um, structures in the gas exchange system that has cartilage the cartilage, the trachea, and bronchus, right. The cartilage for bronch for trachea is C-shaped, okay? Complete of incomplete, it consists of incomplete C-shaped rings or regular rings. Why that of bronchos is block shape, okay? Irregular block, okay? Blocks of cartilage. So this is bronchos lined by squ squamous epithelium. So which one is this? Hmm? Squamous means thin or flattened. So the one that has squamous is the gas exchange surface which is alveolus right line by slated epithelium but not supported by cartilage this should be what okay this should be bronchial right so let's go back and find that so this is trachea which letter is trachea which letter is bronchus which letter is alveolus and which letter is bronchial right so let's go back Okay, which of them is trachea? Of course, you said it's B. B is trachea. So show me bronchus or bronchi. Bronchus is singular, bronchi plural. So this is a bronchus C. This is another bronchus. That's J. So both C and J are bronchi. Okay. B is trachea. Can see it? Trachea is the biggest part. It splits into two smaller tubes. Bronchi. So which one is the bronchial? Bronchial, okay, is formed from bronchus. So if you dress, okay, bronchus, split into smaller parts called bronchial. This is bronchial, this is bronchial, and then alveolus is M, okay? M is alveolus. That's the air sacs, that's the gas exchange surface in av in in mammals okay all right so let's go back to where we came from right okay look at that table so you understand what is there okay so we are saying that this is b c j the other one's h then this one is m right no no this is m okay this is h okay all right so look at the table guys track here okay B 
Broncos, C or J or C and J. Okay, M is alveolus, okay, alveolar is plural, bronchioles. Okay, H. All right. So let's go to the next question, guys. Fig 3.1 is a photomicrograph of a section through long tissue, guys. This is very cute. Trust me. Very, very cute, guys. It says, this is little epithelium, all right? This is J. Magnification. So, so you can see, the question is, which part of the long tissue is this? I want you to help me. Which part of the long tissue is this? I think that this is bronchos. Okay, how do I know that this is bronchos? Because can you see, can you see the cartilage? The cartilage is not C shaped, just blocks. This cartilage, send the cartilage is at the base, send the cartilage. Okay, but if it were trachea, the cartilage is C shaped. Okay, but this has blocks of irregular, all right, cartilage. Now, of course, so this is little like epithelium. Right, have the loose tissues. Okay, you see, this is where we find mucous membrane. You can see that, and blood vessels. Do you get it? All right, let's see. They said the state the feature visible in Fig 3.1 that identifies the structure in the center of the cartilage as the bronchus and lists other visible features that help to confirm this certification. Feature that identifies um, identify the bronchus. Other features. The one that identifies Broncos, which one do you think identifies Broncos? Of course, is what? It is what? Guys, what is it that identifies Broncos? Okay? Irregular blocks of cartilage. Irregular blocks of cartilage. Okay? Alright, this irregular blocks of cartilage, that's cartilage, guys. And then other features, of course, it has selected epithelium, they have mentioned it. Goblet cells, right? Mucous gland, that is mucous gland, smooth muscles, okay. Um, what else? Elastic fibers. They're all here, right? See it. So irregular. If you don't mention irregular, say plates, irregular or plates of cartilage. I said cartilage not C shaped. You see, the C shape is for track care. But when the cartilage is irregular or plates or blocks is for bronchus, okay? Now, other features include smooth muscle, elastic tissue or fibers, mucous gland, thick wall. You can see the thick wall there. Um, large lumen. See, large lumen is also large size, relatively, relatively to surrounding alveoli. Okay? Surrounding alveoli. Okay, three marks. Let's go to the next question. So, identify the structure label J in Fig 3.1. State. The evidence visible in Fig 3.1 that supports your answer. Okay, let's go back. Where is that J, guys? See, see J. So try this. What is J? Okay. Now J looks like what? Can you see? Has little large lumen. My first attempt is that because J should be. If you look here, this also this also like J, and then. This looks like blood, okay. So this this J should be what? Okay, you're waiting for me to tell you the answer. Attempt it, okay. So write out what you think J is and the features. J is a blood vessel. How do I know it's a blood vessel? Can it has thick wall? You can say that the wall is thick, okay. Yeah, maybe tunica media. Tunica media is the middle layer, okay. Now, I can also say specifically that J looks like a vein. How do I know it has large lumen? Okay. And it has, if I say thin wall, once I mention vein, I must say relatively large lumen. And I must mention thin wall. Okay. But if I mention, if you mention artery, you would not say that it has thick wall. Okay. And small lumen. Right. But it's a blood vessel. So anything you mention, you have to describe it. If you say blood vessel, you describe what makes a blood vessel. Okay, it has blood cells there. Okay, it has thick wall, right? Okay, so let's go back to that question, right? So what supports your answer? Okay, the evidence. Look at look at the masking. So evidence must match status structure. So if you say it's blood vessel, so 
a blood vessel plus any of these presence of tunica media or circular layers of smooth muscles yeah or three layers in wall so tunica uh, this is tunica not tunisia similar to structure on left which has blood cells so it's, it's similar to that not bronchial okay because it's not stated not rounded or shape not definite shape so if you say it's artery or arterial you must state what artery have At, these are the features of artery small lumen relative to thickness of wall small lumen with thick wall thick tunica media muscular layer thick tunica external or if you mention is vein you must say not definite shape so veins don't have to save the shape not round and it's true not oval so that means if it's rounded okay that's artery large lumen relative to the thickness of wall large lumen and thin wall large lumen and thin wall that's typical of vein guys okay um yes just two marks this little epithelium labeled in fig 3.1 consists of goblet cells and slated epithelial cells outline how goblet cells and cilia work to maintain healthy lung tissue guys how do they goblet cells and cilia their teammates how do they keep our lung tissue healthy pause this video and try the answer so i feel that of course if you mention goblet cells goblet cells secret mucus remember secret mucus the mucus trap pathogens okay mucus also act as a physical barrier between the pathogens and the lining of the airways okay acts as a chemical barrier sometimes it contains lysozyme that digest bacteria cell wall okay now because mucus um, is secreted by goblet cell goblet cell secret mucus cilia sweeps away carpet of mucus right from the back of the from the alveolar of course all right towards the back of the throat okay so look at it so goblet cells produce or secret mucus the mucus trap pathogens yeah I said dust particles don't cilia waft to moves or carries push mucus to the back of throat just two marks the airways of the gas exchange system are lined with epithelium gradual changes in the structural features of this epithelium occur as the airway branch and become increasingly narrow fig 1.1 shows the changes that occur in the number of goblet cells in the epithelium of different structures of gas exchange system okay this is it fig one four point one that's four point one these gas exchange structures look at them trachea bronchi larger bronchios smaller bronchios alveoli number of goblet cells in epithelium many many so many here many large bronchios very few none none all right let's see what it tells us it says goblet cells produce mucus which is important in maintaining health of the airways the smallest bronchioles closest 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 this is to the alveoli are known as respiratory bronchioles okay so the ones closest to alveoli they are called respiratory bronchioles so just and explain why respiratory bronchioles do not have any goblet cells why is it they don't have goblet cells okay they are closest to alveoli okay and alveoli is it an exchange surface so i wanted to pause the video and suggest and explain okay why respiratory bronchioles do not have any goblet cells why okay so they do not have okay goblet cells why because goblet cells secrete mucus okay why because mucus increases diffusion distance because you know they are close to the alveoli so and they can as well sometimes act as exchange surface but alveoli is the main exchange surface okay so because they're close to alveoli mucus increases diffusion distance and that reduces all right the movement of oxygen across the alveolar wall into the blood right it reduces Ventilation or gas exchange. Let us it here. See, presence of mucus can hinder or prevent gas exchange or entry of air into the airflow. Okay, lumen of airways, respiratory bronchioles are narrow. 
So that that could narrow it. Respiratory bronchioles are close to alveoli. They are close to alveoli. Okay, suggestion that respiratory bronchioles have no cilia. So they don't have this is another point, they don't have any cilia present. So if there is goblet cells and goblet cells secret mucus, it will be difficult to move mucus. Reject this is a reject bronchioles do not have cilia as a general statement. Is respiratory does not have cilia. Mucus increases distance, right? Diffusion distance. All right. Uh, for gases, oxygen, carbon dioxide, reject if direction of that diffusion of gas is incorrect. Yeah, increased risk of infection. Yes, yeah, strap pathogens. These are the reasons. So one reduces diffusion of gases, increases diffusion distance. You can see that risk of infection. All right, no cilia to move the mucus. All right, so that's just too much. Fig 4.1 is a photomicrograph section through a bronchial which is surrounded by alveoli. So let, let's look at it. This is alveoli. This is this is this is bronchial. This is how bronchial looks like. Okay. All right. So this is tissue X. Okay. This is this is. Can you see? This is a selected epithelium. That's the lumen, right? The selected epithelium is folded. Right here. You can see. After it will have loose tissues and cause um, mucous gland at the next layer beneath it. And then we have this structure X. What is structure X called? Okay. Remember this bronchioles, it doesn't have cartilage. Okay. All right, let's see what it have to give us. There are structural differences between right this little epithelium of the bronchial and epithelium of an alveolus. Okay, epithelium. Describe the differences between the epithelium of bronchioles and epithelium of alveoli, other than differences in the number of gabular cells. So epithelium, pause the video and tell us the difference between the epithelium of bronchioles and the epithelium of alveoli. Okay. So the epithelium, this is epithelium here. The epithelium here, they are long, or you can say they are columnar. Okay. So they are long, columnar, or wider. Okay, while that of the alveoli is just flattened, okay, they are flattened. This is columnar, this is the other one is flattened. That, that of alveolus, alve alveoli is flattened. Why? To shorten diffusion distance, okay, right? So that of bronchial has cilia. Why the slender epithelium of alveolus does not have cilia? Do you get? And you know the reason, okay. So because it doesn't have goblet blood cells, no cilia needed. Okay. Alright, so look at it. So bronchioles have columnar or epithelium cells, columnar and cuboidal cells. Yeah, they have both columnar and cuboidal. Columnar are tall cells. Cuboidal are just just cuboid. This is tall cuboid shape. Okay. Yeah. Let's say bronchioles have slated epithelium, cilia present. Bronchioles larger, longer, these are the cells. Reject the formal cause makes okay. All right, yeah. So that is it, guys. Three marks. Let's roll. Tissue X shown in Fig 4.1 is located in the wall of the bronchial. Okay, same tissue X, and outline the function. Okay, of tissue X in the bronchial. Name tissue X and outline the function. Okay, let's go back. What is this tissue X? What is it? This is if you say it's, it looks like smooth muscle. So if you see it, smooth muscle, what is the function of smooth muscle? Okay? Yeah. So pause the video and try it. Smooth muscle helps to, you know what it does? When it contracts and relaxes, it helps to regulate the diameter of the gas, um, the airways, regulate it. And then it controls or regulates the flow of air to the alveoli and from the alveoli. Okay. So when it contracts, the airways becomes constricted, less air gets to the alveoli. When it relaxes, the airway becomes dilated, so more, more air reaches the alveoli, okay? uh, or more air forced out of the alveoli. Okay? Yeah, that's for smooth. But if you, if you say that it is, because somehow if you say it's elastic fiber, right? what is the function of elastic fiber? So elastic fiber, of course, it prevents this from, okay, from rupturing. Okay, it gives it uh, mechanical support, prevents it from rupturing. Basically, okay. All right, let's see. Um, that's it here. Yeah. 
So look at it. Smooth muzzle plus any two. Stretch and recoil that vasoconstriction, vasodilation. The muscles contract, they contract and relaxation of bronchial. So that's what they have. Change or decreases diameter of bronchial or lumen of airway. It's a reject contraction of bronchial or lungs or airways. Okay. Um, says a adjust, accept adjust size of airway. So regulate the constriction of bronchial airway. Control of airflow to and from the alveoli. That's the function. Control, so it controls the volume of air entering or leaving alveoli. Stretch, expand during inhalation. Okay, that is if this is error carry forward. If the, the person mistakenly mentions elastic fiber, yeah, this is the function of elastic fiber. Okay, stretch, expand during inhalation or prevent out over stretching or bursting during inhalation. Recall to help move out during exhalation, move, uh, move air out during exhalation. Okay, error carry forward. So the person mentioned this cartilage, it's still error. You miss the point, but you must be able to state the function of cartilage, prevent collapse. That's the function. Collapse of bronchial airway. Pro, okay, pro, provide support that keeps airway open. That's the function of cartilage. But you know that bronchial doesn't have cartilage, is that okay? But cartilage does prevent collapse or provide support. Okay. Okay, three marks. The alveoli of the lungs are the main gas exchange surface in humans. Explain how blood flow through the alveolar capillary helps to maintain steep diffusion gradient for gas exchange. How does blood flow? Explain how blood flow helps to maintain steep diffusion gradient for gas exchange. So pause the video. Tell us how the blood flow blood maintains steep constraint gradient. Okay. Remember that deoxygenated blood. All right, that is blood with low oxygen concentration flows to the alveolus, okay, in carried in alveolar capillaries. So flows in the alveolus, flows to the alveolus, okay, alveoli, and then oxygen diffuses from the alveolus, okay, because the alveolus has high partial pressure of oxygen, but the oxygenated blood has low partial pressure of oxygen, therefore oxygen then moves. You see, the movement of the oxygen blood into the alveolus creates steep concentra concentration or diffusion gradient because it has low partial pressure of oxygen. But alveolus has high partial pressure of oxygen. That is con con diffusion gradient. And also, the oxygen blood has high partial pressure of CO2 carbon dioxide while um, what is it called? Um, alveolus has high and uh, low partial pressure of CO2. Okay. All right. So look at it. So blood arriving is detected has low partial pressure of oxygen. Okay. Low concentration of or level of oxygen in the blood arriving. Blood arriving has high partial pressure of carbon dioxide. You can see that. Either a newly oxygenated blood is constantly continuous. Yes, we didn't mention it. But once the blood is oxygenated by the movement of oxygen from the alveolus into the blood, the blood moves away through the pulmonary vein. Oxygen then dashes from alveolus into the blood, transported away. Okay, just too much. Alright, let's go to the next question. Ventilation, the ventilation of the lungs is a process of inhalation and exhalation. Ventilation helps to maintain steep diffusion gradients. Explain the role of elastic fibers in the alveolar wall during ventilation. What is the role of elastic fiber in the alveolar wall? Okay, pause the video and try it. Okay, um, yes, elastic fibers. Remember that they are fibers, so you use the word expand or stretch, okay, or recoil. You don't use contraction or relaxation for fibers, okay? So during inhalation, elastic fiber allows the alveoli to stretch or expand and that increases surface area for oxygen uptake right during exhalation it allows the alveoli right to re all right to recoil of course it recoils forcing out to use a seed allow alveoli to expand stretch on inhalation breathing in prevent alveoli from overstretching yeah, and also, yeah, we're stretching sentence structuring. 
or busting, prevent it from overstretching or busting. Okay, recoil to help exhalation. So inhalation is stretches, right? And also prevent it from busting. But the exhalation, when you recoil, it recoil helps to force out used air, right? Fig 5.20 is a photomicrograph of a, trans of a transverse section of a bronze in the lungs. Can you see? Yep, that is. This is smooth muzzle. This is steep. Okay, this is a bronze. Can you see bronchus? Mm. You see? What is this? You see? This, this, this. Okay? This is slated epithelium. Okay, you can see smooth muscles. This is lumen, slated epithelium, smooth muscles. Okay, loose tissues. These are loose tissues where you find blood vessels. You can see this loose line by blood vessels. Okay, mucous glands. Okay, you can find this is smooth muscle here. Can you see smooth muscles, please? Smooth muscles, right? Slated epithelium. What is this? This is sentinel T. Can you see? Hmm? What is this? This is found at the base. What is that T? Identify the tissue level T. Pause the video. T is what? Plates, irregular and blocks, supporting. So that's cartilage, guys. Okay. Yep. Cartilage. Alright. Says 5.1 is a photomicrograph of a transfer section of a bronchus in the lungs. Let's look at it. Okay. The same thing. Yeah. Describe the function of smooth muscle in the bronchus. So what's the function of smooth muscle? Pause the video and try it. Describe it. Describe. Okay. So smooth muscles usually contract. When they contract, okay, they cause the airways to become constricted. Okay. But when allowing more air to move into the alveoli, no, less air it becomes constricted. So less volume of air moves out or towards the alveoli. But when it relaxes, the lumen or diameter of the airway becomes dilated. So more volume of air flows either in or out. Okay. So if you're doing a rigorous exercise, you need a lot of oxygen. So what happens is that your smooth muscle says, you know what? I got you. So it just relaxes and then the lumen becomes dilated. More oxygen reaches your alveoli and you, you you know that is to the blood supplies to the tissues and aerobic respiration occurring you have more energy to do that swimming or boxing or dancing whatever you call it okay so so um that is it let's look at what the oracle says the mask game says any two from smooth muscle contract yeah and relax it that's what the, the contractor change diameter of the air so they change diameter of the airway or the size of the lumen may help to regulate airflow into or away from the gas exchange surfaces. So that's too much. So look at this. Fig 4.1 shows the site of gas exchange in the mammalian lungs. Okay. Yeah, I love this. This is scary. This explains. Can you see this is your little blood coming? This blood is coming here. And they, as they move, they become oxygenated. This is alveolus. Now this is capillary, okay? All right. Yeah, I love this picture. Table 4.1 shows the partial pressure of oxygen um, yeah, and carbon dioxide at locations W, X, Y, and Fig 4.1. Look at it, guys. Partial pressure of oxygen at W okay, is 13.87. All right. But CO2 is low, 5.3. Now, at X, this is X somewhere there. Okay. Uh, you can see that oxygen is low, partial pressure. So that's the oxygenated blood coming in. But this is, is the oxygenated CO2 is high. Okay? So at Y, can you see oxygen level has increased? This is a gas exchange. Okay? CO2 has decreased. Gas exchange. All right? So with reference to FIG 4.1 and table 4.1, this is FIG 4.1, this is table 4.1, guys. Describe how okay the exchange that occurs as blood flows x to y pause the video remember how we do it we pause video and we try solving guys this is how we do it in Tartan university guys right so they say we should describe so you see that what happens there that's exchange so in at point x can you see 
um, the partial pressure of oxygen is low, of course, and then the partial pressure of oxygen at Y at W is high. This is alveolus. So oxygen diffuses into the blood, okay, into the capillary and into the blood. How does it diffuse? It diffuses across the epithelial cell of alveolar wall and then into the uh, across the uh, endothelial cells of capillary wall and then that is into the red blood cell to combine with ox with hemoglobin so it passes through um, five membranes okay All right so you see what has happened here is that co2 also diffuses from the blood okay or plasma or red blood cell into the alveolus down concentration gradient across the descent barriers across okay um, these endothelial cells capillary wall and the epithelial cells of an alveolar wall okay so look at it guys correct action of movement of oxygen and carbon dioxide example oxygen moves from alveolus oxygen is going to move from from high high partial pressure right okay to capillary or blood red blood cells so it's moving here here to low carbon dioxide moves from capillary right moves from here right into the okay diffuses into the respiratory okay diffusion um okay diffusion of oxygen carbon dioxide respiratory gases movement down partial pressure concentration gradient from higher partial pressure to lower that's what's happening use data can quote data right that was shown through alveolar walls almost okay. we have mentioned it binding to hemoglobin here alveolar wall okay in the tailor cell okay for marks elastic valves are present in tissues at the site of gas exchange in lungs describe the role of elastic fibers in the gas exchange system and in cardiovascular so two things there so what is the role of elastic fiber in gas exchange system and cardiovascular cardiovascular is blood vessels heart cardiovascular heart and blood vessel gas exchange system okay pause the video and try it so elastic fiber prevents overstretching or bursting in gas exchange system okay yes prevents it from bursting but it does the same thing in blood vessels okay so what happens is that it stretches over okay rest, and then prevent bursting right okay welcome back yeah so cardiovascular yeah in cardiovascular remember the blood vessel so it stretches to prevent it from bursting okay and then recoils to maintain the pressure of blood okay so friends for bursting maintains the pressure we can look at it guys see alveolar wall stretches expand during inspiration okay Blood vessel stretch expand as blood volume pressure increases. Okay, so stretch to prevent uh, alveoli from bursting. Okay, so guys, sorry for the interruptions. Okay, so you say prevent overstretching. So in the blood vessel, they prevent overstretching, a bursting. So recoiling, recoil during expiration. So. During this is gas exchange here, so in gas exchange, the recoil prevent or uh, help to expel or force out air. Now, of course, in the alveolar wall, they help to expand during expiration. Remember, but during expiration, okay, they expel or force out air. Recoil to apply pressure. Now, this is talking about blood vessel, so maintaining blood, okay, pressure. All right. So that's what it's trying to say is that these two, this is about stretching. So when it stretches in alveolar wall, it, that's during the inspiration to allow uptake of oxygen, of course, it's still stretching in arterial blood vessel, it expands, okay, okay, to as blood volume increases. So why? To prevent busting, okay? Now, but for recoiling, this is this is in expiration. It requires to force out air in gas exchange. Okay, but recoils in 
cardiovascular right to maintain blood pressure okay all right thank you guys this is where we stopped it for now so please follow us up we're going to do other videos all right for you before your exams this is shadro see you later bye for now